then I'll open. Welcome, everyone, to Mystery, a podcast about myths and history. I am one of your hosts, Bryant, with my permanent guest, Cami. Hey, Cami. Hey, Bryant. What's going on? Not a whole lot. What's going on with you? Not much. Uh, I, I cleaned the house, put up the fall decorations. Uh, like fall or like Halloween? Halloween and fall. I've got pumpkins okay. and I've got skeleton birds. Oh, okay, house. cool. So, yeah, I'll have to see that. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, I got to get into the, the mode of it. And and it's exciting because, you know, October, we always have fun with our Halloween themed myths, which we're going to be doing 100%. I think we're going to try and do four episodes, right? One right. every week. Yeah. Yeah. So week. we've been doing biweekly for a little while. Uh, that September is going to be biweekly. We've got a, a, a nice myth, though, today. We're kind of. What have we what did we do last time? We We've been kind of doing some weird ones then we come back we've got like a, a pretty straightforward myth and um, wasn't it brothers grim last time yeah, oh, Hansel yeah and Gretel. Hansel Gretel. so that one was pretty straight well this we're we're, we're talking about i'm going to talk about flood myths and how how they've, they've how they've been how they've aged you're gonna give us a story as you always do on mystery and well why don't you tell us about because there's so many uh, which one did you I, I can just give you my process. I was like, there are too many. Yes. Let me just find the oldest one. So it was like, obviously Gilgamesh is the oldest one. And I was wrong. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> they just stole it from, you know, the Acadians to, from 2000 years later. They're like, oh, that was a good story. Yeah. <laughs> Let's retell it. Right. Right. And it's cool. They, they're pretty, I mean, a lot of these are connected. Like, you know, Mesopotamia, they were all swapping the same stories for thousands of years. So, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So as the show goes, Cammy's going to give us the story. And then uh, I, I'm going to lead a little discussion. I'm going to break down every single myth. This will be a 14-parter. Get ready. Oh, my God. I don't have 14. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have 14 in me. So I use the epic of Atrihasis at Livius.org. And so the translation was on there. After the world was made, the lower gods complained of their endless labor. At that time, the lower gods were men, and the misery of forced work engulfed them. They made the rivers and the streams and the wells and the lakes, and then the high mountains to frame the sky. Everything was drudgery. So the lower gods rose up and lit their tools on fire and used the flaming weapons to make a stand upon the house of Anil. The night allowed for cover as they marched, and they were able to surprise the god. When Anil had been woken, he was made aware that the lower gods had declared their war. Enlil and the other gods were fearful of the uprising, so they compromised and made another lesser, lesser to be known as man. They bore the yoke and the drudgery of the world, and for years this happened, until the gods began to hear a din, so loud, so boisterous, that it disturbed them. The humans had become too plentiful, so the gods ordered a flood to destroy mankind. The labor could be done by another creation. But Inki, who formed the clay to form the men, found one, his favorite, Atrihasis. In a dream, he came to his creation and said to him, leave your home and your life and build a boat, for in a short time there will be seven days of rain and the world will be transformed. He told him the dimensions to build a boat and promised to rain down birds and fish when he needed them. So when Atrihasis awoke, he brought forth all the wise men and elders of the city and told them that he was never to set foot on the land of Enlil again and must be thrown to the depths of the ocean to dwell with his lot. Then he set to work on his boat and slaughtered many animals and left many animals alive to bring with him. He had a feast for his family and the animals he brought on the boat with him. Then he cut his line and began to sail. And after a time, the winds began to pick up and the storm clouds rolled in and the sky was black with rain for seven days. All of mankind, save one, was punished for their reverie. But the gods were hungry, for there was no one to toil for their meals. 
So they found Daughtry Hostas and cursed his line. Too many men make too much noise. Now men would die of old age and women would die, die in childbirth and every third child would die before they were born. And thus mankind would never be too numerous again. That's a form of birth control right there. Yeah, <laughs> just a curse. <laughs> That's really interesting. I didn't know that part of the story. Um, wow, really cool. So yeah, this that was uh, that story comes from. It, it's very closely related to the Gilgamesh stuff in that area. So Mesopotamia area, we're talking about um, eighteen thousand BCE, I believe, is when they believe that was or that might have been actually Gilgamesh and that one could be even older I think that I think Gilgamesh is 2,000 years after that story yes yes 1600 or 16 yeah 1600 and 1800 so um <clears throat> but very similar although Gilgamesh's stories we had an episode on Gilgamesh mm -hmm. and uh his stories are, are pretty cool they're, they're very focused on him and his exploits he's very Her Herculean in a lot of ways but it it's cool so flood myths you know we kind of knew that there were multiples of them and it, and it's, that's definitely true. Like Wikipedia has a whole page dedicated. You could just list of flood myths and it's, I mean, pick at it. You could pick a country, you could pick a nation within that country and I, a cultural within that nation. I, it's insane, but they all kind of have very similar themes. They're all basically either creation myths or punishment myths for the most part. This was both basically. Right. Yeah. And, and a lot of the times they're both um, like the, the, and, and the Christian myth, or I should say the Abrahamic myth, because it's just as potent in uh, Islam and Judaism uh, and just as important. Uh, it, it's, it is just that, um, you know, Noah is basically Atrahasis. He's, you know, said like, he, he's good enough to stay around. Like, here's the, here's the, Ikea instructions on how to build the best arc. Uh, and then you're good to go. And and it it looks like, so uh, there was a great article actually from pbs.org. I think this came out around the same time as, uh, you know, the, the 2014 film Noah with Russell Crowe came out um, in 2014. And I think this article is from then and kind of in response to that, because there was a little, there was a lot of talk about it from there. And uh, geomythology was a cool word that they used in their article. Um, and it, it reminded me of one of my favorite concepts that I've I haven't talked about lately, so I'll bring it up. Uh, euhemerism, which, God, I, that was the Medusa episode, I think, is where we first brought that up, I want to say. I believe so, yeah. That's the idea that, like, events happen in our history, and over time, they are sort of turned into myth uh, during their retelling, you know? So geomythology here is how these flood stories and geology intersect and are related because there, there were things there was uh, seven th or around seven to 8,000 years ago, the Persian Gulf flooded uh, scientists know. And that, that definitely had an effect. I think it, they believe it was um, ice caps in Europe. Oh no, this is a different one. So uh, another thing is that ice caps in Europe um, melted just sort of naturally. And then, uh, it, it caused like Mediterranean sea levels to rise, you know, very quickly. It was, it was kind of a phenomenon. And so this could have had flooding effects and things like that. Um, like there was a flood that was recorded in, in the Greek world um, around Crete, the island of Crete and the surrounding islands there, but it didn't reach Athens and other places. So these were more localized, these, these sort of ideas, but, and I, it, we also see like, so, uh, these early, early civilizations, the, like in Mesopotamia, they're, they're so reliant on rivers um, and, and in China too, like China is super dependent on rivers. Like you're so far inland, you, you need a, a source of water and that's, that's where life comes from. And in China, it, it was sort of noted that it, emperors and leaders were sort of judged on how well they dealt with floods. So in these land and, and Egypt, especially, this is another place where, you know, you, you can imagine how important it was to control the or, or be able to get through these sort of things. So geomythology, humorism, they're definitely, I mean, we, we horrible floods happen today. Uh, so it, it would make sense that these things happen and it's sort of um, 
these stories are a response to that and, and a remembering of that. Uh, another thing too, which some of the articles I read sort of posit um, within uh, Britannica and Wikipedia is that the, the Abrahamic religions version, the Noah's Ark flood is sort of an evolution of the Sumerian and Akkadian Mesopotamian flood myths. Um, again, being sort of creation and. Oh, it's, it's, there like it's definitely there it was very similar in a lot of ways yeah it, it, they they evolved and it it kind of you know the the story was polytheistic in yours the the, the gods are fight, fighting amongst themselves and things mm -hmm. like that um but i mean it, you know it obviously becomes very clearly about and one it God. makes a statement about um labor uprising <laughs> um so yeah the, it, it's it's really cool to see this story and uh, like Jewish mythology, um, like 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 you know ancient um, Hebrew mythology is really cool because that's kind of what this is in a way. Um, I, I don't like hold me to that, but this area is where this all developed and then kind of went outward. And so it, it's just interesting to see how that developed. Um, like I said, lots of countries uh, have it well known. Um, lots of religions, like like I said, China has a really uh, important myth that involves the thunder god. Um, and a brother and a sister who have to repopulate. Uh, one thing that was cool that I knew about, so Norse mythology, I won't, I promise you this, I'm not gonna go one by one. I'm just kind of noting some really cool ones. Um, Norse mythology, I knew the story from just all the Norse stuff that we've done and just my personal interest. Um, the world in Norse mythology was created when Odin and his brothers killed the giant Ymir, which I, th I think there might be their dad, uh, which, you know, what kind of Zeus, Kronos, you know, illusions sure. there. Um, and from Amir, they they tore his limbs off, and the blood, like the blood, came out, and that's what formed the Earth, the, the world, basically. And so I I never even thought of that as like a, a flood myth in a way, but because you're like I, I thought of it more just like daddy issues myth. I don't know. <laughs> so it was really cool to see that, but I, I didn't necessarily, I, I looked over, there was a frost giant named Bergelmir and his wife, they made an ark and they repopulated the earth. So wow. I thought that was, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, remember though, uh, a lot of what we know of Norse comes from medieval Christians who were like, let's write this down. Yeah, that's There's true. a similar thing in Irish. Um, myth. I, I'm not. I don't have it here, really. But I read uh, there's a flood myth uh, for Ireland, but it was recorded by the Christians of Ireland. But it, it, it's cool. It preserves definitely some of their myth. But we've talked time and time again of how Irish myth and Christianity, you know, have kind of melded, and we lose some of the original paganism from it. So I'm wondering if, like, you know, Thor Thornson was writing this down. And he was like, I need to add an arc and make an allusion to Christianity. Otherwise, do you know, I literally know somebody with that name. Oh I, yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. it's that's what yeah, I was trying to like <laughs> be funny, but it's also like how they name people in Norway. So it's, it's pretty true. Um, there's some other ones. Uh, Hinduism has a great one as well. That's specifically about repopulation and a God picking a man. Buddhism has a, a really interesting one um, from the Jat Jataka tales. Uh, it, it's, Probably one of the more different ones that was really popular, though, it was about a thousand dishonest carpenters who like went to an island like they were like shunned to an island. OK. And the spirits of the island were really pissed off at them. And one least dishonest carpenter was able to be saved, but everyone else drowned. Um, so that, that was a that was a really fun one that I read. But uh, in Greek mythology, um there's a uh, uh, Zeus is upset with human populations. They kind of want to hit the reset button. Um, Zeus told Deucalion, the son of Prometheus, to make an ark uh, with his wife Pyrrha. Um, and uh, they had to throw stones over their shoulders to make men and women. There you go. That's, you know, how it goes. It is so interesting that they each have like a hero. Because you think yeah. of flood myth, maybe it's just like, oh, this is what Zeus decided to do or whoever right in. But they actually have oh, this one survivor in every and one that's, of these stories. I, I think that's where you have to go to like the geo myth, the, the humorism. Like, surely flooding could have happened, and it would have been disastrous. And like your, you know, we're talking ancient times. Your your great ancestors could have passed a story. Yeah, well, of just like, look at oh, what happened in Pakistan, right? Last week, 
and you you tell your kids and you tell your kids and and you keep telling the story and you mm -hmm. you can't remember all the names so you kind of form it into one name and while several of you might have survived and it might have been maybe two days it feels like it was one glorious dude and what's you know one week so i i think that it just helps or 40 like, days and 40 nights as it right. was I, what, wasn't it 40 at noah i think so yeah i believe so um, i said at noah yeah at like <laughs> yeah at, the at yeah, symbol like it. we're at adding noah. him somebody at noah and ask him real fast so yeah i i it's really cool i it's some of these stories absolutely have to be real i mean these things did happen you know flooding did happen um uh oh here and i have my my stuff here yeah so great flood of the middle east at the end of the last ice age which was about seven thousand years ago um at that time uh the black sea was a freshwater lake um surrounded by farmlands so which is definitely not now uh so yeah the you know the geography completely changed I mean, these these societies like you remember you know we're talking 18th century bce to, like to try and think about that um remember homer wrote the odyssey probably around i believe it's the 8th century so 10,000 years before homer and those greeks are doing their greeky thing this is when this flood story was written so the flood that happened that they're writing about if it did that if they're specifically writing about one probably happened thousands of years before that so right it's it's you know these these sedentary societies were were doing their thing for so long, so it's it's definitely viable that a flood a horrible flood happened and it took their society hundreds of years to recover from it and during that time period, floods you know fun stories came, and then eventually they were like slap Gilga mesh on it that'll sell more <laughs> urns or whatever we're making pots. Urns. Yeah, you slap Gilga. You know it's in um in Civilization Six they have Gilga mesh, mm -hmm. and um. Everyone calls him Gilga Bro because he, it, whenever he's in your game, he, he wants to be your friend really early. He, he wants, and that's what he, because you remember he wanted to be, uh, what's his fan? And, uh, Inkadu? and Inkadu's friend. Yeah, he's just super friendly and, but he's buff and ripped and I don't know. It's, it's pretty <laughs> great. So Gilga Bro wants, you know, throw Gilga Bro's face on it, sell it. We're good. Get your anti flooding pot, put water <laughs> in it. You don't flood. Uh, so yeah, the, I mean, this is great. Uh, some other theories that like, people have thrown out I, I there's hardly any weight to it but you know these could be big tsunamis or um even uh, for the earlier time especially uh farther back we go comets or meteors could have fallen in the ocean and caused like a sudden flood something that shifted um a, a ca making a catastrophic flood so it's really wild this has been a big topic for thousands of years um it, these aren't just old myths either uh they come back through time uh there's actually this really cool um, the Motif Index of Folk Literature, uh, this is something I came across, it's a six volume catalog, and uh, it was made by American folklorist Stith Thompson, I'm sure you're related, mm -hmm. um, who uh, wrote it in 1932, or it released it in 1932 to 36, and then revised and expanded it in the uh, late 50s. So it's a, it's a really cool, uh, you know, Wikipedia of their time that, and the, the flood, uh, myth is brought up there and it specifically kind of refers to the fact of the um the rebirth and the punishment part of it too so um yeah i i mean it's a a very timeless like story and it's just wild to see how it organically popped up in different societies uh and i i, I what's cool just like how you know um human language comes from you know there's there's a few stem languages that branched out into many different ones i'm curious if one specific flood turned into a story and then like like what if the mesopotamian one somehow ended up becoming the chinese one you know mm -hmm. um like those the migration movements and things like that or the hindu one became you know it's really cool to think about those so i mean this could have happened at a time that the world was vastly different yeah yeah you know? absolutely and i i need to point out too it, many of the indigenous peoples of the americas and of australia uh the polynesian islands they have very unique myths as well um that are are uh, but they they follow that very strict pattern of um either divine punishment a, a, with a big flood um, the Aztec one especially is really cool um, with a God warning a man and his wife and they hollow out a tree um, and he seals it inside of them. Um, <laughs> the the uh, what's funny, though, or different really is that the earth got flooded. Everyone, they weren't killed. They were turned into fish. And after the flood, um, 
the the husband and wife disobeyed the god's wish and he he said don't eat the fish and he, they were like it's really good though so they did and so his punishment was turning them into dogs that does not sound like a punishment to me yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean you're turning dogs you human a sounds like a punishment right yeah <laughs> two dogs like in a, a dog. tree and you, all you got is fish. Yeah, that, no, that's not too bad. But um, so yeah, it, like I, 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 I've been talking about Asia and um, uh, European myths, but no, this is definitely an American myth that goes way far back. Uh, so yeah, really, I, I, it's great that we touched upon it. This is probably one of the quintessential myths. We could absolutely talk about some of these on on their own episode. Maybe we will. I don't know. Uh, if you know of one specifically, let us know. Uh, I'd love to hear about, especially other areas, if how important they are. And, you know, I wonder, I wonder, like in Hinduism and Buddhist texts, if it's something that's really talked about, like it is in Christian, you know, I, I went to church when I was a kid and it, you're absolutely told about it I'm, or you see a crappy cartoon. Sure. It's like one of the four main myths. It's right. like Adam and Eve and then the. Yeah. Pharaoh uh, and the, the blood on the, and then the, yeah, and then the basket baby. Yeah. And then flood. <laughs> That's Christianity in a nutshell. Boom. There you go. So, right. Yeah. Very fun. I'll, I'll post a couple links that I had to. The previous article was really fun to read. Um, my last thought, Noah 2014. Did you see that with Russell Crowe? <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't make time for it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it. That's the end of the episode. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think it's worth making time for. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Should I see it? I don't even like Russell Crowe. I think it's because I'm a little bit jealous because doesn't he have that really pretty wife? Or no, that was somebody else. Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't know. Nicole I'd rather Kidman, whoever learn about she's married to. His wife than this movie. Oh, okay. It's probably boring. I mean, you've heard the story before, you know what happens. I can't imagine it would be interesting. And like, and of course, everyone. I mean, they've got Anthony Hopkins. Oh, Russell I do Crow. like him. I know, but like, when you think of eighteen thousand, or I guess when would that have taken place? I don't know. When you think of like four thousand years BC. ago, yeah. yeah. There you go. Do you think people looked like Anthony Hopkins? Probably not. Welsh? Do they look Welsh? That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Probably All right, not. everyone. Well, <laughs> I mean, but we you've got to you... think of who the studios. I mean, that's a bigger problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that covers it. I was very happy to go over this, and I hope you all learned something, as the show hopes to do. Learn you. Cami, do you have anything you want to add before we wrap up? No, I think that's it. Awesome. Well, yeah, we've got one more for September and then spooky, fun October month. So get ready for that. And yeah, uh, let us know if you think we should have added something. Comment, listen, do other things. Link tree below in the description. Yep, yeah, I think that's it. All right, everyone. Well, we will talk to you next time. Oh.